the rushing waters of the powerful Skagit River receding some in concrete today. It's just been a constant state of watchfulness. Watching the river's every move, especially outside town at the Cape Horn development, where it's estimated that 30 percent of the 200 properties were submerged underwater. So it flooded the garage, the, uh, our guest house and everything. But my wife had raised the house two feet, so it missed our house by a foot and a half. So A big relief for Ron Bates, but he's got a lot of cleaning up in the days ahead. Uh, it drained back out, and uh, we're going to have to probably get rid of rugs and uh, some of the stuff that started to flow dumped over and some of the electrical things that were put up out of water dumped into the water so other neighbors too shifting through wet damaged property it was pretty rough because the uh the water came up and then the wind hit after during that the town of concrete itself was spared from the flood it didn't threaten any property with buildings on it but power in the downtown core out until late today it didn't stop the local hardware store from providing supplies to those in need selling a lot of gas cans and uh, kerosene, lamp, oil. The days ahead for many here in Cape Horn will likely not be easy. It's depressing. It's a mess. I feel so bad for so many people in here. And the National Weather Service tells me that the concrete area will remain above flood stage until sometime Thursday afternoon. So folks here have a couple more days to go. Near Concrete Tonight, I'm Kara Costanich, Como News. I did just get an update from investigators here, at least from the independent investigative force that now has to come in in order to investigate this since this is an officer involved shooting. What I learned right now is that there was one Snoqualmie North Bend officer who was here in the park and ended up with some in some sort of a, a discussion or an altercation with a 33 year old man. Now the stories she tells us, the investigative team tells us are a little bit conflicting so they're still trying to sort out all the information but what they have right now is that there was one male officer here from Snoqualmie North Bend, one 33-year-old man who is now dead. That man accused of going for the officer's gun and the officer then shooting. So this is what we have so far. Again, the investigative team includes Bellevue Police, Kirkland Police, King County Sheriff's Department, and WSP, uh, Washington State Patrol. So these independent investigators all have to come together right now. And this is why it's taking a little bit longer to get some of this information because they have now all come from their various jurisdictions. They're here together now and they're trying to store, sort out stories. Debbie Christofferson with that team told us that some of the stories they're getting right now are a little bit conflicting. And so she said that they're having to sort all that out and figure out exactly what happened. And this is going to take some time, but we do know that a 33-year-old man shot and killed by a Snoqualmie North Bend officer here in Torgerson Park just after 11 o'clock last night, which, by the way, at 11 o'clock, that park should be closed where there should be nobody here on the premises. That's the other question that we have that investigators just don't have an answer for us yet. Was that officer here responding to an actual 911 call, or was the officer just here checking out the park knowing that it should be closed and people should not be in the park? So these are some of the questions that that we're asking, and investigators are still working to figure out those answers, too. Live in North Bend, Denise Whitaker, Como News. You cannot come out here and harass people. This is Charles Woodward. Neighbors call him Lawnmower Man because he has so many laid out on the sidewalk at the corner of 8th Avenue Northwest and 49th Street in Ballard. Every time they ask him to turn down the loud music or noise, neighbors say he goes off. <laughs> I'm allowed to make noise at night just like they are. Neighbor Kelly Davidson says the loud music, grinding metal, and the annoying hum of a generator doesn't seem to care. Keeps her up at night. In fact, has threatened my neighbors. Davidson lives near Woodward and his three cars, two wooden sheds, and 20 plus lawnmowers that take up the sidewalk. We're kind of stuck right now in this situation. Sean Telford also lives nearby and says he's reached out to every city agency for help. The Hope team said there's nothing they can do if Charles doesn't want services. There's they can't force him to take it, including. Council member Dan Strauss and Mayor Jenny Durkin. Do nothing Durkin doesn't answer her phone. She doesn't respond. But Telford says nobody addresses the problem. The selective enforcement of our rules around here is really wearing down the compassion that we have for this issue. Council member Strauss says the vehicle outreach team is out almost daily in Ballard trying to help people living in RVs and cars, but no immediate solution for the neighbors dealing with Woodward. You heard the Hope team came and offered you housing. What kind of housing? What was other crazy people? What do you 
stupid. We've also been trying to get some straight answers from the Seattle Department of Transportation, the agency that's supposed to be enforcing the 72-hour rule on vehicles that sit idle on the street. We did see some stickers urging RV owners to move, including one on that notorious double-decker that's been parked in the same spot for weeks. But no guidance on how SDOT plans to address Woodward's cars. I'm not concerned about getting towed. Ain't nobody gonna touch my So until then, Davidson and some other neighbors are trying to file a restraining order against their homeless neighbor. We're planning to go to court. Hoping at the very least, it forces him to turn it down a notch. There's off-limits to you! Understand? From Seattle, Jonathan Cho, Como News. Hi, everyone. I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.